Welcome to my five year update video on my Model 3. It also happens to be my 316th video since starting this channel in May of 2018, the same month that I got my Model 3. I placed my $1,000 deposit on March 31st, 2016 and had a two year wait until it arrived. I was one of the earliest in my state with the VIN of 14,219. I can't believe that I own this car for five years now. Today's video is shot at Dorothy Dix Park and also in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. I wanted to catch the sunrise from this beautiful location. Let's get started. Check out the link in the upper right for my four year update of the major things that happened last year. This video will cover everything that happened from May 2022 until today and what to expect. This can also be considered a channel update video. I received my Model 3 long range rear wheel drive on May 17th, 2018. As of this video, I have 63,113 miles or 101,571 kilometers. I've driven an average of 12,623 miles or 20,315 kilometers a year since I've had the car. Fairly normal miles for the average American driver. The first two years I drove about 14,000 miles or 22,531 kilometers each year. Then in 2020 I only drove 8,000 miles or 12,875 kilometers due to the pandemic. Last year I drove 12,172 miles or 19,589 kilometers. And this year I drove 14,941 miles or 24,045 kilometers. On my way out of the park, I noticed that there was a level two charging station in one of the parking lots. So why not get a free charge? This is a good segue into the next section. A few years ago, I started using the OBD2 Bluetooth adapter and the Scan My Tesla app to get more information from the car. You can see my video on this in the upper right of the screen. It gathers a couple hundred data points that the car keeps track of. I'll show you some of the pages of data. First is the lights in this miscellaneous page. You can see the various numbers for the lights, but what's interesting is that it has the car's factory birth date listed, which for my car is April 27th, 2018 at 1013 PM. How exact. On the next page, we have the HVAC system, which has a number of temperatures, RPM, and wattage of those components. The temperatures page is next. It lists temps for cells, passive and active cooling, or heating, among other things. This page lists the 96 battery cell groups and their associated voltages. The most intense page is the one for the battery pack itself. We can find lots of interesting things like how much AC or DC charging over the life of the car has occurred. For my car, there has been 362 charge cycles and 351 discharge cycles over the last five years. The full ideal range shows how a full pack is currently rated. In my case, 290 miles of range. This number can vary based on the state of the BMS or battery management system of the pack and I have seen it anywhere between 278 and 310 miles since I've been tracking it. The nominal full pack shows how many kilowatt hours is available. In this case, it shows 67.7 kilowatt hours. It was 67.9 a year ago. The number full pack when new is a program default of 77.8 kilowatt hours. The real number when new varies from car to car. Subtract the 3% energy buffer shows how much is lost to degradation. However, I don't know the original kilowatt hours of the pack, 
so I can't calculate a true degradation with this program. Degradation is a debatable calculation. It's not definite with these numbers. A rough guess is about 290 miles out of the original 310, which is about 6.45% over 63,000 miles or five years. Due to the full rated range that varies between 278 to 302 miles over the last several months, this degradation number also varies, so I don't get hung up on it. All battery packs will have some amount of degradation over time. I crunched the numbers and here are the results. As far as charging costs for this year for superchargers and CCS, I used 1,133 kilowatt hours, which cost $432.47. For AC charging this year, I used 3,252 kilowatt hours or $487.80. Total electricity used this year was 4,385 kilowatt hours, which was $920.27, at a cost of 6.16 cents per mile or 3.83 cents per kilometer. For the lifetime numbers, supercharging and CCS, I used 3,064 kilowatt hours, which cost $669.39. For AC charging, I used 15,211 kilowatt hours, which was $2,281.65. So, total electricity spent over five years was 18,275 kilowatt hours which was $2,951.04, which at a cost of 4.68 cents per mile, or 2.91 cents per kilometer. When looking at the total, the amount of DC fast charging was 17% of the total. Not bad if you do a decent amount of long distance traveling. I use AC charging for my local driving. I had two surface visits since the four-year update video last May. The first was on June 17th at 49,347 miles. I had the left fog light replaced. Luckily, Tesla fixed it for free as a Goodwill service, and this was done by mobile service. The second was on November 8th at 56,355 miles. I had the front upper control arms replaced due to noise caused by the ball joints lubrication failing. This was done at the local service center and was fairly quickly done in two hours. This cost $255.24 for parts, labor, and tax. I did a video covering this visit. I had 14 service visits in the first five years of ownership. That does seem excessive to me. Eight were at the service center, which luckily is only five miles from my house. Six were done by mobile service at my house or office, which is convenient. And that's it for service visits. The existing tires were the Michelin Pilot Sport AS3 Plus, and they were at 38,158 miles. They had about 2 30 seconds of an inch of tread depth remaining out of the original 9 30 seconds when new. I've been very happy with the performance and longevity of these tires, much better miles at 38,000 versus 23,000 on the original MX M4. Only about 4% reduction in efficiency, and they cost a lot less too. So I highly recommend this line of tires. On April 28th, I purchased a new set of tires from Discount Tire. Since the tires were at 38,000 miles out of the 45,000 mile warranty, I was prorated $30 per tire on the new set. The replacement tires are the new version that are called the Pilot Sport AS4. Total cost was $1,127.08, which included the four tires, installation, hazard warranty, fees, and taxes. 
Since my tires have recently been wearing more on the inner tread, I went to get a four wheel alignment check done. It cost me $203.72 and I had it done at Chapel Hill Tire since Discount Tire doesn't do alignments. It's a good idea to get an alignment done when you purchase new tires or also when you notice abnormal tire wear. So far the tires seem very similar to the previous AS3 Plus and I have about 1,609 miles on them so far. Besides the annual replacement of the cabin air filter and tire rotations every 3 to 4,000 miles, I had to add the new tires and get the alignment done. Nothing else was needed this year. Maintenance this year was $1,127.08 for the new tires, $203.72 for the four-wheel alignment, $255.24 for replacing the front upper control arms, and $1,498 for the cap and filters, which added up to $1,601.02. Maintenance and repairs over the last five years has totaled $2,523.51, of which $1,655.12 was tires, $203.72 was the alignment, $255.24 for the upper control arms, and $409.43 for other items like the filters, wiper blades, fluid, etc. Moving from the park to the top of the Wilmington Street Station parking deck, I'll continue with the next section. My car's basic vehicle warranty ended in May of 2022. I'm not a big proponent of extended warranties, so I have not purchased any from my car. The high voltage battery pack and drive unit are still covered until May 17, 2026. Make sure you get your car inspected before the four year basic vehicle warranty ends. Focus on the suspension and get a brake caliper cleaning and also get the brake fluid checked. Probably not bad to do this after having the car for four years. I'll now give a tour of the car and highlight some of the changes for this year. There have been two different driver screens that I installed. The one in this video is the 4.6 inch screen that's attached to the steering wheel column. I also installed the yoke steering wheel, carbon fiber stocks, a streaming dashboard LED light, lighted door steps, driver headrest with rear mount, rear seat screen with control for HVAC and heated seats as well as watching video, a power front hood that comes in handy for food takeout, eagle eye taillights, the CCS upgrade which greatly expands the number of charging locations, also two roof sunshades that can be slid open or closed in the sun, and finally, several sets of 18-inch wheel covers this year, including turbine look and arachnid styles. The interior has been working well. The polyurethane seats are still in great condition, and black is much easier to keep clean. Overall, the car is in great shape for 5 years old and 63,000 miles. It's been a good year, and I've been on 8 long-distance trips with the car. The supercharger network is expanding and each time I go on a trip there are more options and faster too with the V3 superchargers being installed at a rapid rate. With the added CCS ability more charging options are available. As you may have noticed from my videos over the past year I will be getting a new EV this summer sometime around late July. I will unfortunately have to sell my Model 3 so this will probably be the last annual update for my car. I will be transitioning to the new channel when the car arrives. I will still have my 300 plus episodes accessible as a resource. Look forward to more over the next few months. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching this video and many more will be coming this year. See you next time.
Also, a total cost of ownership video should be arriving soon, so stay tuned.